I got 4,000 subscribers for 949,000 views. But Vshred, when he gets 596,000, he gets 30,000 subscribers. I do not think this channel is even representative of 2.2 million real people. I think a lot of it is artificially inflated numbers. Like there's no way. What's up guys, Derek, more PlaytomerDates.com. Today we're going to be reacting to uh, We Need to Stop V Shred by Josh Brett. So um, I guess I'm late to the party because I see the top comments. Greg Doucette saw it three days ago. Scott Herman saw it yesterday. Um, some other big influencer fitness guys saw it yesterday. So I just stumbled across this by accident and Josh Brett is a new creator, it seems like. He only has 9,000 subscribers, even though obviously the reason I'm bringing this up, by the way, is because I got a, a few minutes into it and I've never made a V-Shred specific video, but you can imagine what my <laughs> what my take on it is when you've seen some of the stuff like Greg has made, some of the stuff other guys in the industry have made that are well-respected um, about V-Shred. Like you can just imagine what I would, you know, speculate on. You'll get some of my opinions in this video, by the way, but this was very well done and it doesn't seem like like he's a new creator, so you know maybe if I can, it looks like the algorithm's picking it up quite nicely. But you know if I can help, uh, if I can help get it some more attention, like great because this was very well put together. I only got a few minutes in, and I was like, okay, this guy put a shit ton of time into this, and it's very, very well. I don't even. It's like one of those like documentary style things that you can tell the guy spent a lot of time um, creating this very, very thoroughly edited like masterpiece essentially summarizing like all of the important points and i haven't watched the full thing i got a few minutes in i was like hey this thing is very good and it's worth reacting to in case you guys don't stumble across it i think it's worth a watch so you're about to watch it on my channel and i highly recommend you check out uh josh brett's because i imagine he will probably put out uh um you know similar stuff in the future that'll probably be you know similar quality so i'm gonna start from the beginning and we're gonna go through it together Quick Google search reveals he was single-handedly responsible for 2020. But jokes aside, Vince is what you would call a fitness guru, and it doesn't take long to identify his infamy. For those of you who don't know V-Shred, he's just a retard. There is seriously something wrong that you want innocent people to ingest highly controversial and simply dangerous ingredients. One day I'm gonna be my deathbed. I don't want my overwhelming big regret that I watched a 50 minute V-Shred video. Because pretty much every single video this guy puts out is full of misinformation and really does nothing except mislead people people and promote garbage products in the process. I can't believe he's saying this stuff. It's mind blowing that he's that stupid. This has no idea what the f he's talking about. Yeah, not a fan. Um... In an industry with so much debate, there seems to be something that everyone agrees on. You should not listen to V-Shred, right? You just shouldn't. But here's where it gets confusing. Despite being hated amongst the fitness community, his brand is growing year after year. And after supposedly hitting a hundred million dollars in sales within just three years, it would seem as if he is only becoming more and more successful. So why is Vshred regarded as the villain of the industry? What is the reason for all the hate? And despite all of this, why is he only gonna make more and more money? Over the past few months, I've spent way too much of my time researching Vshred, so you don't have to. And spoiler alert, things are not as innocent as they seem. As popular and successful as these influencer programs can seem, you need to take a minute to find out what's real life versus what's Instagram. Ask questions. So my kind of stance before I actually get into the details here is this guy is a heavy duty internet marketer where he will go hard as fuck on the ads like this guy is all over the place he's on snapchat he's on facebook he's you know he pushes ads hard to the point where i wouldn't be surprised if to reach that hundred million dollars in revenue he spent how many you know dozens of millions of dollars in you know advertising costs that's not to take away from the fact that he earned that revenue but there's a huge scope of audience that is outside of like the niche fitness community of like informed individuals there's just a general massive population of people who don't watch this kind of shit who don't watch you know greg Doucette videos who don't watch you know whoever like this is actually a relatively small 
community when you actually look at how like the biggest influencers are like you know a million subscribers like that's that's a lot but i mean in very more mainstream niches big influencers are guys with like 20 million subscribers and there's a huge demographic of people that don't even watch youtube at all like obviously it's becoming more and more popular but it seems like v shred goes after the the uninformed he has heavy duty marketing ad spend and goes aggressively after those who don't even know who he is probably. And um, I'm gonna get into soon as well some of these statistics behind his numbers because they're uh, something you would only be able to pick out if you have been an influencer for a while. And I'll describe why. Maybe he touches on it in the video, but it's something I've noticed very specifically myself about his uh, channel. In 2015, Vshred posted a video named Get Shredded Fast. This is his first public video on the channel, and it was pretty much your average run-of-the-mill follow-along video. What's up guys, uh, Vince the creator of the Vince Ampy Six Pack Shred here. He then went on to post video after video, and was slowly growing his brand, providing tips in a similar way to the YouTuber Athlean X. And as a result, he gained thousands and thousands of followers. Things were going great, and what seemed like an innocent, wholesome fitness channel was on the rise. Until this man came along. He highlighted how Vshred had in fact been making content a little too similar to Athlean X, and was essentially plagiarizing his videos. He just copies everything word for word most of the time from what Athlean X does. Uh, he takes a video of Athlean X's from the past, and then he decides that he is going to remake it. Uh, stumbling over the f words because he doesn't understand it the way that Jeff does. The magnifying glass was on V-Shred, and it quickly became apparent that Vince had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. And this goes for any cable extension, for the any tricep extension on the cable. When you're doing a tricep extension on a cable right here, what happens is, yes, right here, and then first off, when you're doing this, a lot of issue big after being exposed he began to make his own content for the first time and this only further highlighted how clueless he was he tried to teach people to deadlift all while not knowing how to himself talking about the romanian deadlift that is just when you see people stepping up to the bar they have their feet about shoulder width apart feet slightly pointed outwards and they grab this bar just outside of their shins and they pull this straight up their legs they drive their hips forward lock out their glutes he spreads tons of misinformation to See, like for me, seeing how he has been so successful, even after he got exposed by Alan Roberts, got exposed by all the guys who just like fucking annihilated him, it just goes to show how his target demographic is essentially people outside of the scope of who like our videos get to. Not that like we all share the same demographic, but I mean, people on YouTube, like, I don't know, the same general interests, they kind of overlap a lot. Like you'll find a lot of these channels have, a lot of their subscribers are kind of the same as other channels in this niche, but Vshred, his target, like his Facebook ads, Snapchat ads, etc., they go way further than, they go way wider than what you know the general youtube fitness community reaches from organic views so it's not surprising that a lot of people just have no idea about his reputation and or you know don't really like take it that seriously i guess today i'm going to be showing you guys why the bench press is never going to get your chest any bigger and has even tried to invent his own dangerous exercises to which athlean x mocked ow Fuck me what are you doing? What is that? Oh yeah, I remember this fucking chest thing. Jesse, Jesse, what the f are you doing now? And what is up with that hair? Oh, I copied it. But what is perhaps more of a concern is the fact that despite his apparent lack of knowledge, he is selling his own programs. And you would have thought that given his awful track record and extortionate prices, he must struggle to make sales. I mean, nobody takes him seriously, right? And that is where you would be wrong. Despite his poor reputation, most of his videos receive positive feedback, his followers are increasing, and he's only making more and more money. So okay, so one thing a lot of people, I think, overlook when it comes to his giant following is the fact that I think a lot of it is artificially inflated. And I think he bought a lot of it, to be honest. Because when you look at Social Blade, I don't know if you saw my Will Tennyson video where I like used math to kind of estimate what his subscriber count was. And I based it on 
um, similar demographics, similar views relative to subscriber ratios. And I calculated with you know what I assumed to be pretty reasonable accuracy, what his subscriber count was at, at the time. And he actually messaged me privately and said I was pretty fucking spot on. And it's not hard to go to Social Blade and start looking at some of these metrics and starting to pick up patterns. And it becomes pretty obvious when someone when something's like way off. So like, for example, if you go to Vshred's page, he's kind of like in a groove where he's, you know, obviously doing well off of his ads at this point. He's not trying to grow his channel. He's kind of like built up his, you know, credibility with his massive channel. And now he's kind of just like cranking the ad spend because he's figured out like a, uh, you know, a thing that works, you know, and you just pour more money into it when you have... When your ads have a good enough return on ad spend, it's called ROAS, you can just fucking pour into them, you know? And it's just like exponential what you can do if you know how to work Facebook ads as well as, you know, the other platforms. So for him, the YouTube is not like, creating organically viewed videos is not his priority anymore. And you can see his subscriber count is growing very slowly. He's only getting, you know, an average of 67,000 views a, vi uh, a day right now and only 667 subscribers per day because he's not trying to grow the channel. However, when he was trying to build up his credibility, you can see historically, these are his numbers way back in the day. So this is, you know, back in 2018, he was at 805,000 subscribers in January 19. And this looks like pretty linear progression. Like you'd think, oh, this guy's just putting in work. You know, this guy is, uh, you know, cranking up the vids and people are liking them. But when you look a bit closer, it doesn't really make sense because you look here, you can see January 19th. So he's gaining, you know, like 8,000, 9,000 subscribers a day upwards of, or these are weeks, sorry. So week, you know, June 3rd to June 10th, 15,000 subscribers, 19,000, July 8th to July 15th, getting up as high as 27,000 subscribers in a week, or actually his peak is 30K. November 4th, 2019 to November 11th of 2019. But when you look at how many views the guy got during those time frames, does it line up? Let's go down to November. During that time frame, during the week when he gained 30,000 subscribers, he had 596,000 views. Does that equate? Could you possibly in your fucking wildest dreams with the best most likable person, not somebody who people like actually think is a scammer and people like, you know, generally don't really trust who, you know, copies people's ideas or whatever he does. Would you ever conceivably have one out of every 20 people who watches your video subscribe or something like that? Like if you actually do the math, you had about, you know, 600,000 views and he jumped up 30,000 subscribers during that same time frame. Is it really realistic that every 20 people who watches is going, one person subscribes? No, that's like, let's look at me for an example. So we can use mine as a comparison just to exemplify the point. So this is my social blade for the past month. And you can see if I get, you know, 600, over 600,000 views. Let's actually look at my best, highest viewed day in this month, 949,000 views. How many subscribers did I get? 4,000. I got 4,000 subscribers for 949,000 views. But Vshred, when he gets 596,000, he gets 30,000 subscribers. Does it seem realistic that Vshred is like 10 times more likable and subscribable than I am? <laughs> like I'm not trying to be cocky or anything, but it's these are just impossible numbers. Like the guy is getting, you know, 600,000 views per week and he is getting subscriber numbers that make absolutely no sense for the amount of views you're getting. Like you simply do not have that much traffic to equate to these subscribers. So what I think is a lot of his, you know, like claims are likely artificially inflated. I do not think this channel is even representative of 2.2 million real people. I think a lot of it is artificially inflated numbers. Like there's no fucking way I would ever, if I got a million views, Let's see, like when was this? The 27,000 um, subscribers in a week. So September 2nd. So if we look on September, let's see, September 2nd to September 9th, 2019. So September 2nd to September 9th, 771,000 views. And he gets 27,000 subscribers. So let's go look at a time when I get 771,000 views and see how many subscribers I get. So let's... Uh, this day is uh, close enough, 757,000, I got 3,000. So he gets 10 times as many subscribers per view than I would. Like, does that seem realistic at all? No, not in my opinion. In my opinion, this is like a heavily inflated 
channel that is not representative of what this guy is actually pulling in. And I wouldn't be surprised if his, you know, like revenue claims are very similar. So what is going on behind the curtains? Here's something you may not know. The success of VShred was no coincidence. Founded in 2015, VShred was formed by a group of internet marketers, fitness experts, who likely found Vince a model at the time and understood that making him the face of the company would be a monetarily good idea. The more attractive you are, the easier it is to influence people. And as Greg Duchette put it, It's like the Richter scale, okay, people? The higher your number, so if you're a 10, but you're like the freaking earthquake to blow up all earthquakes, he's up there, he's close to a 10. The higher you up, okay, hear me out, the more money you can make. Now with around 100 to 200 employees, VShred is a big business. And while Vince is the face of the company, you must remember that he's essentially just a puppet on strings, doing whatever he is told by the internet marketers. You see, these are the true people behind the company's success, capitalizing on their marketing expertise. These people create ad after ad after ad, using every marketing trick under the sun, in a similar way to which six pack shortcuts grew their business. So most people think that I eat salads all day, I'm starving myself to maintain abs, but in reality, I actually eat like a pig. Pizza or salad? Which one do you think I'm having for dinner tonight? Well, it's not this. It's definitely not this rabbit food. Of course, anyone with decent gym knowledge can see straight through their advertising and identify that it's just a bunch of emotionally manipulative, pseudoscience-infused nonsense. Harvard researchers have found what they're calling a biological loophole that takes just 30 seconds first thing in the morning that can help crank up even the slowest of metabolisms and help promote calorie burning. All Jeez, like some of this stuff is like way too preying on the uninformed. With a bunch of questionable testimonials. It looks like the V shreds thing is like photoshopped in there. However, that's the best thing about internet marketing. You can set up your ads in such a way that they only target the beginners as these are the easiest to manipulate. Most of a company's spend is not invested into making the programs and videos accurate, full of science and optimal for their customers, but is spent on running ads to millions of people. Now you may argue that there's nothing wrong with this process, and marketing isn't something which should be demonized. However, it's the way in which the company goes about this, which in my opinion, is extremely shady. Which ad looks more appealing to beginners? Exactly. The only problem is, it's full of false promises. Even Vince himself looks like he's having a hard time reading some of these dubious scripts, probably because he doesn't actually believe what he's saying. Hey, Vince here. And if you're looking for a way to take your performance in the gym, your energy in the gym, your mood and your focus at the gym, and even your results after the gym to the next level, you have to try pre-workout by Sculpt Nation. And just as an observation, literally all of VShred reviews on YouTube, where the speaker doesn't look like they've got a gun to their head, have very few good things to say. Did VShred work for you? I'm just gonna be honest. Um, uh, what? No. Uh, no. I just realized this is not good for my body. It's not based in science, it's not what I want, it's not gonna add to my long-term fitness and overall healthy well-being. So I just stopped. All in all, don't buy this program. If I could give it less than one star, I would. The exercise selection is okay, but everything else is trash. But as a whole, I think most people won't see very good results from this. The best you can do is survive. I believe from this alone, it's very easy to grasp that the company's only intention is to make as much money as possible. Yeah, I think what a lot of people don't realize too is, yeah, the majority of companies spend is in advertising, but when you're selling information too, your margin is so high because you're selling just like, it's not a physical product that you have to pay for rent for a warehouse. It's not something you need to pay for the infrastructure of anything. You don't need to pay for materials. You don't need to pay for ingredients. Like obviously he has his like supplements and whatever too, but I think the meat and potatoes of what his uh, you know company thrives on is probably the programs, and that's information in like an ebook or whatever it is that he sells it, which is free for them to make, and then they can sell it at a massive markup that then gives them a huge margin for advertising to just aggressively fucking pound however many people they need in order to get you know whatever fraction of them to actually buy to be profitable, and that's kind of uh, 
the general approach of some of the, uh, it's almost like the get rich quick, you know, like make money courses, but like fitness edition kind of like toned down. But if you need further convincing, let's take a look at their supplement line, where Vince accidentally admits that the company only wants profit. At your expense, of course. Perhaps one of the worst things about V-Shred is their supplement line, Sculpt Nation. Described by many as a parody of the supplement industry, this supplement line highlights just about everything wrong with the industry. Ranging from fat burners which just do not work, to testosterone boosters which are scientifically proven to not have any significant effect on muscle growth. Yeah, so like obviously, my opinion is a lot of this stuff, the claims he makes are far too astronomical to justify his advertisements and stuff. Like he, he goes way too out of his way to make it sound way too promising and overhypes the shit out of them and then sells it to uneducated, uninformed people. Like the reality is he should be saying stuff like, like for example, with fat burners, are you going to significantly enhance your metabolic rate and expend more than an additional like 300, 400 calories per day with ease? Like, no, you're not. However, if you have a like reasonably designed formula that's decent, you can suppress somebody's appetite enough to actually have them adhere to their diet model with greater ease. And then downstream, that's actually going to lead to improved fat loss outcomes. However, you have to be transparent about that. You can't just be like, oh, this is the Harvard found this one thing that's going to give you like the fucking hack in order to, you know, <laughs> increase even if you have like a thyroid deficiency, it's going to fix this and blah, blah, blah testosterone booster that has you know a fucking like some of the stuff i see in the test boosters too it's so misleading because they'll put in this big blend of shit they have no idea what it is and then they'll shove in like a rimistane or something in the middle and then you don't realize that because you're literally inhibiting the aromatization process and your body has fucking neuro and cardiotoxicity going on that's why your testosterone levels went up on paper so you can actually show Look how much our test levels increased when you use our supplement. And in reality, you're literally putting an aromatase inhibitor in a guy's fucking test booster product that you're selling him and claiming, look how many benefits you're getting out of it. Little did you know, you're literally fucking inhibiting negative feedback to your HPTA and using what is like a pharmaceutical drug essentially in this product in order to just put up an arbitrary boost in your T levels. It's like, it's a really misleading practice, in my opinion, with the test booster thing, because it's like, yeah, there are some things, you know, that will be put in there traditionally that everyone thinks about when they think test boosters, but then they'll put in like a fat dose of an aromatase inhibitor, which is actually unhealthy as fuck. Like inhibit, it's like does something designed for estrogen management in an excess, not for somebody who's chronically trying to maintain a higher T level. And on paper, your test levels will actually elevate fairly significantly, but little do you know, it's because you literally have enzymatic activity in your brain, heart, fucking everywhere inhibited from the supplement. It's like, that's one of the things that like really pisses me off when I see some of these companies. Their selection is definitely interesting. Do not be fooled by their ridiculous marketing, promising to blowtorch body fat. Not one of these supplements is worth your money. Besides being hugely overpriced and backed only by pseudoscience, the actual ingredients they use are often clinically underdosed, as every- So this is the pre-workout? Pre-workout, worse than the market. Who fuck dude, that is low. That is low. What? Jesus Christ. This thing probably cost like a few bucks to make. Wow. That's brutal. So I can see, yeah, I can see why people would be upset with this in-depth Sculpt Nation review will tell you. Another trick the company went for was using proprietary blends. I always recommend people to go for companies which do not use these because as V-Shred said, what's cool is that they don't slap some proprietary blend on the nutrition label, which basically just means that they don't have to tell you what's in it. And also usually means they're using minimal dosages and getting higher profit margins because that's what supplements usually do. Are you beginning to see some of the problems here? And yet the company still has the audacity to post this. You can probably understand why Sculpt Nation's board of directors is constantly telling me that we need to set the price of burn to at least $249 per bottle. And I'm always the one who pushes back and tells them, no way. And don't get me wrong, a healthy diet and regular exercise are awesome for you. It's just that none of them are this simple or even as scientifically supported as using the ingredients that are inside burn. 
Firstly, the poorly dosed ingredients which go into each tub probably cost them pennies. And secondly, he is essentially trying to insinuate that the benefits of diet and exercise are not as scientifically supported as his magic pills. Okay, so actually looking at the ingredients, I thought this would be interesting to kind of break down. So it definitely doesn't cost him a few cents, I will tell you that, but it certainly is nowhere near enough to justify a $250 price. Like that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. So uh, underdosed Epi Gallo Catechin, um, Capsi Max, I guess you could, you know, argue if this is reasonably dosed or not. Caffeine, 100 milligrams. Like I think most people know that a cup of coffee is like, you know, roughly this ballpark. It's not really a high dose for a product that's going to be geared towards ideally suppressing your appetite, you know, and then whatever additional fat loss properties you could get out of it, which would be more so at the bottom here with the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor antagonist. Grains of paradise, another thermogenic ingredient. Um, but the main thing being the caffeine and the Yohimbine and roll sign. It's interesting how we overlap two alpha-2 adrenergic receptor antagonists. I would probably just use a more reasonable dose uh, like I probably wouldn't even use the Yohimbine to be honest. I'd probably just use the Raul sign. And I actually like this ingredient. I think it actually works well. I just think the price here just makes no fucking sense, obviously. And the combination, the way they hype it up as, oh, this is like the uh, the Harvard, like, I don't know if this is the thing they hype up as like, oh, Harvard found the fucking trick to like make you whatever. But like the way he was just talking about it at his uh, V Shred like meeting or whatever, where he's like, the ingredients are like far too, or literally imply it's more important than diet and exercise like it's fucking stupid dude and these are you know this is far from what i would consider like a comprehensive you know fat burning formula and you know most of them like i can see the the argument against fat burners is generally that they're not going to make a significant difference in terms of actual energy expenditure but when you actually look at the mechanism of some of the stuff like alpha 2 adrenergic receptor antagonism um, and you look at some of the interactions with appetite suppression, some of the things with energy when you're in a deficit and you are otherwise deprived and feel like you can't even fucking, you know, get yourself to the gym and whatnot. Some of this stuff does come in handy. However, this formula in particular, I would consider very, very poor and severely overpriced, obviously. Like Raul sign its own. You could buy it for like fucking 20 bucks, add some caffeine onto that. And you've basically got this formula, you know, the rest of it is kind of underdosed from what I can tell. So I wouldn't be, uh, like, I wouldn't buy it personally, obviously. Some of the ingredients separately, I think, are, you know, good though. Like, Raul sign I use, like, every time I cut, to be honest. He's essentially trying to insinuate that the benefits of diet and exercise are not as scientifically supported as his magic pills. Yeah, so obviously that's fucking nonsense, you know? Like, in this day and age, you would think people would understand that that does not work. Like people do not can see through it, but I guess with him again, he sort of accepted that this demographic with reasonably informed consumers is not going to be the consumers who buy his shit. It's going to be the people who have no idea who he is and he just cranks with fucking ads and are newbies to this stuff. I think that's, you know, the general premise of this whole thing is he's sort of preying on the uninformed with overpriced shit with ridiculous margins which gives him the ability to market super aggressively because of those margins. Like the reason the products are so expensive is likely because I highly doubt it's because of excessive demand. I think it's more so to support the marketing to push a product that, you know, is underdosed in order to build up his bank in order to reinvest in the marketing that then aggressively pushes, you know, the information and shit that is free for them to sell. And they can also mark up to some ridiculous degree as well. And that's one of the big problems with this company. They get things the wrong way around, often intentionally, for the sake of profit. What you are looking at now is the nutrition pyramid, with the most important aspects of nutrition towards the bottom, and the least important at the top. Sculpt Nation try and promote their supplements like it's the other way around. This doesn't exactly look like a company you can trust, does it? But if things weren't already bad enough, the company's Trustpilot reviews are some of the worst I've ever seen. With most reviewers calling them scammers and frauds, there are many claims of unauthorized charges to members' cards of as much as $477. So in conclusion, I think it's safe to say that this is a company to avoid. So what's next for V-Shred? Well, currently, 
they seem to be focused on expanding their clothing line. And I must give them credit, they're yet to make a major balls up of this, ignoring their stupidly high prices of course. Here we have a pair of some of the brightest leggings that I've ever seen, priced at $65. A quick search on Alibaba and you can find a strikingly similar pair for 90% less. It's safe to say that they're making a crazy profit out of anyone unfortunate enough to shop there. And that's all I really need to say about the clothing. At least in this case, customers can see what they are getting. And the company doesn't try and use any pseudoscience infused marketing here, making this one of Vshred's most genuine products yet. I believe the company as a whole is going to make a lot more money over the next few years. Even though there's people, I'm sure Vshred has genuinely helped the company's hunger for profits at the expense of the customer overshadow this. You see, there are just so many better places to get your information, supplements and clothing, which is why I strongly encourage you to avoid Vshred at all costs. My mission in creating this video was to summarize the V-Shred controversy and to hopefully make people reconsider buying from the company. If you could like and share this video, that would greatly help this get pushed out to the YouTube algorithm to hopefully reach as many beginners as possible and give them a heads up about this company. But if not, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Pizza or salad? Which one? <laughs> that was funny, ending. That was really well put together. It feels like I just watched like a fucking Netflix documentary almost. Um, comment section is, uh, you know, very supportive and whatnot. That was a uh, awesome video. Yeah. So anyways, I would highly recommend uh, checking out. Uh, well, you, are, you already watched it if you're on here, but go drop it a like. Um, drop him a sub if you want to see more stuff like that. That was, uh, I can just imagine how long that would have put together because, you know, I've been doing this for a while now and some of the, some of the stuff with the integration of the uh, the B-roll, the uh, the overlaying of stuff, integrating like multiple clips of different things, like this took a long time to put together, I guarantee, even though the video was only 13 minutes, I guarantee this is a lot of time invested in this and this was very well put together. So um, awesome video by Josh Brett and I fully agree with everything he said. So hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. That was a really entertaining one for me. So like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates1dates.com, follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates. Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, couple podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind. Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas, I designed myself from scratch with efficacious dosages that I designed myself. Um, and anything else I'm associated with, my recommended lab tests and diagnostics to stay on top of your health. Um, and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.